trade receivables and trade payables control accounts. So, key points in this chapter. The trade receivables control account is reconciled to the sales ledger. The trade payables control account is reconciled to the purchase ledger. If there's a difference between them, it's an error because the trade receivables control account should always reconcile to the sales ledger. The trade payables control account should always reconcile to the purchase ledger. Um, what you'll do in the exam is you'll typically be given a sort of a, a, a sort of difference between the two, the two, uh, uh, you know, the sales, the control account and the sales ledger, or the uh, um, or the trade payables control account and the purchase ledger. And you'll be given four scenarios: what what could have produced this this error, and you'll pick either one or two of them that that, that could have really. Um, Another question that you can have as well is, is what is the balance on the trade receivables control account or the trade payables control account? And that requires a good knowledge of, of T accounts and posting from the day book. So um, in the introduction to bookkeeping unit, you should have become familiar with control accounts for trade receivables and trade payables, a sales ledger, which breaks down the trade receivables control account into each customer's account, the purchase ledger, which breaks down the trade payables uh, you know, uh, control account into each of the suppliers' accounts, Supplier statements stating what the supplier believes the amount due is. Remittance advices from the customer stating what, what they're paying and what they believe the balance is on the account. Posting via daybooks to the general ledger, control accounts, and to the sales and purchase ledger. So, if you're not familiar with those terms, you must return to the introduction to bookkeeping book to obtain this understanding before starting to reconcile each stage of the accounting system to, to one another. Now, um, so, it's, it's available. Go into that play, playlist or, or, or go into that book and, and, and gain, the, gain the knowledge there. Really. In this chapter, we're going to reconcile the trade receivables control account to the sales ledger and the trade payables control account to the purchase ledger. The control account should always reconcile to their appropriate ledger. If there's not, there's an error in the account system which will require correction. The supplier statement and remittance advice is given an indication where there may be errors, but the supplier or customer may be, may be incorrect rather than our system. What you'll tend to have is the exam will so, sort of give their give the statements or what have you and, uh, and say it's right. Um, yeah. So an advantage of a digital system is that the sales and purchase ledgers will always reconcile to the respective control accounts because the computer is not going to make transposition errors. The poster might be wrong, you know, it might be, might be different to the in actual invoice in there, but it will still add correctly. Now let's go through then reconciliation of the trade receivables control account and sales ledger. Periodically, the trade receivables control account, which could also be called the sales ledger by the examiner, and the sales ledger, uh, sorry, sorry, the sales ledger control account, uh, and the sales ledger are reconciled to ensure that they equal one another if they reconcile. So we're going to reconcile the trade receivables control account, sometimes called the sales ledger control account, and the sales ledger. And that's, that's what we're going to do. Uh, to ensure that they equal one another, they reconcile. If they, if they don't, there's an error in either the general ledger control account or in the sales ledger subsidiary accounts. In real life, this is going to re would require a review of posting from the day books to the sales ledger control account and the sales ledger to see where the discrepancy occurred. In an exam situation, an error is going to be presented with potential scenarios that could have created uh, the error, uh, uh, that error being provided. You must pick the right answer. To answer this type of question, what we're going to do is we're going to try and reduce this from having a bit of a think and mental arithmetic into sort of, sort of a four-step process, really. So, we don't want to be having to, to, to think too much uh, in the exam, uh, especially not mental arithmetic. We're trying to sort of imagine what the situation is going to be. We're going to reduce it to a four-step process in there. Uh, so in the exam situation, the errors are going to be presented with potential scenarios that could have created the error being provided. You're going to pick the right answer, you know, A to D. Might be one, might be two of them. Yeah. So four steps to this one. Step one. And then the total of the trade receivables control account and the sales ledger to determine the difference. Often the sales ledger, if we've got, if we're given the sales ledger accounts that we've got to add up to create what the balance is on the sales ledger, often they're going to include one account with a credit balance to see uh, if debits and credits are understood. So if you can understand the fact that you know, it's possible for a customer to have a credit balance on their account because they've paid in advance or they've got a credit note or whatever, or they've, they've overpaid, what have you. Um, so that you can understand that actually that, that, that it is possible for it to be um, your negative money. Uh, no. So, and that's why the positive money, negative money method of double entry bookkeeping is sort of superior, superior really, and you can understand a negative um, money uh, position for a customer who's paid in advance. So that's step one. We're going to work out what the difference is. Step two, using the scenario offered, creating the, we're going to create the journal that would have created the error. So we're going to create that journal. Uh, for example, let's say a £400 invoice being posted once to the sales ledger control account and twice to the sales ledger. This would be the journal here, debit sales ledger control account, credit sales, and then debit sales ledger twice. Yeah, so that's that. We're giving us an example of what, what could have happened. You know? Step three, we're going to reverse that journal. So we're going to reverse it from the sales ledger control account and the sales ledger. And then step four, we're going to see if they now equal each other. 
So if we now equal each of the ones we've taken out that uh, that scenario, you know, the journal from that scenario, if they now equal each other, we know that that was that scenario was the one that created the error. If it's not, it's another scenario. So that's that's the process that we're going to do. Yeah. Um, Alternatively, you might be given an error that's happened to be required to explain the difference. Uh, so in this sort of situation, you're, you, you're sort of given the, the you know, a scenario that's happened and then what, well, what's, what's going to be the difference between the, the control account and the sales ledger. You're going to set up the, uh, the journal that's happened, for example, posting the sale twice, and you're going to determine which of the options available uh, given the journals uh, actually posted on those that, that should have been posted. So you might be given the figures. In here, so in here, you know, we've got the two difference between the, the trade ledger. We've got the trade receivables control account, the sales ledger. We might have had to have created that from a series of accounts that we're given to add them all up. Now, you might be given the numbers. You might not. You might just be told that one's bigger than the other uh, in there. Um, which, in which case, if we're told that one's bigger than the other, just make it up that one's a hundred pound bigger than the other. Uh, and then, um, similarly down here, we've got you know some scenarios in here, but we're not being given any amounts. So in here. We've worked out what the difference is, so 2,000, so that's the amount that we're going to be using, the 2,000 as our, as our figures. Uh, now, if you've not been given any up here and any down here, use £100. Always remember as well, it might the exam the exam question might include VAT, so you might need to need to understand you know, the, the impact of VAT. Um, off on it, you know, they might give you, let's say, a net a net figure for a, a sales invoice, and then you're going to have to gross it up. You know, yeah, gross it up. So, um, how are we going to go about this then? So step one, what was the difference between the trade receivables control account and the sales ledger? It's £2,000. And so we've got a journal that's resulted in the sales ledger being £2,000 less than the control account. So we've got sales ledger, £2,000 less than the control account. That's our figure we're going to use, £2,000. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the journals that will create the error. So here we've got our scenarios in here. Let's create the journals that come from this scenario in here. So we post the sales invoice twice to an account in the sales ledger. So we post it twice. That's our in the sales ledger, so we have 4,000 in the sales ledger, 2,000 in the control account. And yeah, we do that for all the, all the four scenarios. Step three, we're going to reverse them. So we reverse it and put the other way, you know, so reverse it out. So if we reverse this one in here, we've reduced the sales ledger by 4,000, so we've gone from 98 to 94, and we've reduced the control account from 100,000 to, to 98,000. Well, you can see that's different, so that's not the answer. And here we reverse these ones in here, and we can see those two are the same, and this one is different. So it m could be one of those two. So in this instance here, in this question, the answer was B and C. Yeah. So and that's now a nice four-step process. You know, uh, work, work out the difference in there, work out um, you know, what the uh, journal was that was posted, reverse it in step three, and then step four, check, or, or is the control account and the sales ledger now exactly the same? If that's the situation, then that's those are your answers. If it's not the situation, that's not your answer. And now you don't have to think and have any kind of mental arithmetic or and mental gymnastics in it. In it. No, no, it's just you know, step one, two, three, four. Okay. Reconciliation of the trade payables to uh, control account and the purchase ledger. Steps to correct them in the scenarios are going to be exactly the same as with the sales above. Step one, total the, the two control accounts, total the control account, total the purchase ledger, determine the difference in there. Um, it could be, instead of being called trade payables control account, it could be purchase ledger control account. Uh, that, that could be useful, it's used sometimes. Sometimes again, the purchase ledger is going to include an account that's got a debit in there. You know, we've, we've paid in advance for something. Uh, in there. So that, that's possible to just check your debits and credits. Step two, using the scenario, um, you know, create the journals uh, that are set out in the scenarios. Create the journals set out in the scenarios. Step three, reverse them. Step four, does the tra after reversing those those uh, those journals given the scenarios, does the trade variables control account uh, reckon it be the same as the purchase ledger? If it is, it's that scenario. If it's not, it's a different one. Okay, so that's the answer. That's that's how to do it. And there. A um, few um, you know, examples in the book to practice your way through, uh, and then um, that, that's, how, that's how you achieve it. Okay, now why do we go around this, this portion here? Well, it gives structure. You know, you just, you know exactly what's going to happen. The questions come along, right? Okay, it's a trade, trade receivables control account question to the, to the sales ledger. And uh, I know that I'm going to go through four steps. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, stops all the flapping in the exam, really. And the second one is, it's accurate. You know, you're not having to rely on, on mental arithmetic or you know, whatever columns you want to produce in your own, own way. Um, no, it's just always going to be the same. It's always going to be accurate. 
so that's how that's how we go about it and that's why that's going to really improve what is probably the second hardest either the first or the second hardest question in the exam really after suspense accounts or alongside suspense accounts right let's look at the second possible question you might have on sales ledger control accounts or purchase ledger control accounts or you know uh, I've just called them sales ledger control accounts, purchase ledger here to use the alternative wording. Could be trade receivables control accounts up here, trade payables control accounts down here. In this one, it'll be saying, what is the balance on those accounts? And I've read this and must. You must use T accounts for this question, really. You've got two things that are required. You must use T accounts uh, for this. And so that's why T accounts are, are pushed so heavily in the introduction to bookkeeping book uh, and the playlist for that one, uh, because you must use them here. Um, yeah. Don't try and use it with any kind of columns or whatever it is that you're trying to come up with and send T accounts all the way. And you must also understand where the postings of the day books are. So I've put them in here. So we'll start off with a brought forward balance in here. Assuming it's going to be debit, possible it could be credit, unlike, very, very unlikely. Uh, and the sales day book goes into you know, debit, uh, the sales ledger control account, or debit, the trade receivables control account, uh, credit sales, credit VAT. And then here we got the discounts allowed thing there, reducing uh, our sales ledger uh, control account balance, sales returns, payments from the customers on the uh, credit side of the, well, no, on the debit side of the cash book, isn't it? So debit cash, uh, or debit or debit bank, and credit the sales ledger control account. Recoverable debts coming from the journal day book here. So this one here has reduced our, our debt. Uh, and in, in, uh, in, uh, level three in the level three unit we'll see provisions for doubtful debts as well and then we're going to typically have a carried forward figure uh, total up make sure that it equals the same uh, the bar the brought forward figure then is going to be the balance on the account you could very easily be asked for uh, the accounts at the you know the balances at the end of the month and that you know the account the examiner tracks, likes to call these things balances and they're the carried forward balance is only a balancing figure to just check that the, the two um the two sides equal one another again and re, you retotal it and check that the, that the two sides are retotaled again the brought forward figure is always the actual balance of the trial balance uh, you know of the first the following month but the examiner likes to, to do it like that um even though it's not not the same as what it's done in real work in real life and then on the purchase ledger control account, we've got our brought forward in here, purchase day book, uh, you know, debit expenses, debit VAT, credits, uh, you know, the, the, the um, purchase ledger control account. And then we've got discounts received, purchase returns, uh, payments on the credit side of the cash book, and then our carry forwards uh, position in here. Note how we don't have any irrecoverable debts, because if we had irrecoverable debts um, in terms of, well, you know, irrecoverable and why we already expenses, uh, for suppliers, then we would be bankrupt, and so um, that, that's not assumed. You know, that's not assumed within the within the system. So that is uh, uh, you know, our trade receivables control accounts and trade payables control accounts uh, questions. And in terms of our next chapter, we're going to revisit the journal and review the types of journals you might be required to post in this daybook in the exam. So that's the those questions. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Bye. -bye.